Hello everyone, my name is Enoch. I'm a fourth year electrical engineer at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, I'm a peer academic advisor for the School of Engineering, Undergraduate Student Affairs. Today I want to talk about the engineering portfolio, kind of go over what it is, how it applies to engineering, where you can use it, uh, how to make one specifically. So what is a portfolio? It is a visual representation of your work that can complement your resume. Does it have to be a physical folder or portfolio? Not necessarily. Uh, nowadays, it could really be anything. It could be a PDF, a website, um, or just an actual physical portfolio. So why should you make one? Sometimes a portfolio is required for your internship, job, or grad school when you're completing an application. A portfolio is an efficient way to show details of your projects and designs that may not be readily evident in your resume. And of course, it is a very good description of your own design work to show what you've done. So how would you make a portfolio? We'll get into that, but for now, let's just talk about how to document your projects by making a design notebook. So a design notebook is just a notebook where you'll keep all the information from all your different projects. Some of these projects could include class projects, senior design projects from school. Uh, they could include extracurricular projects, such as personal projects that you do by yourself, projects that you do with a club or organization, or competitions, or even research projects such as 199, individual study. Other places that you could do projects include internships or co-op experiences, but just keep in mind that you may need your employer's permission to record these things down or put them on your uh, portfolio. So some of the things to collect, documentation would include costs, timeline, your goals, projected goals, your analyses, your product specs, and then of course testing information. If you've ever written a proposal, such as like a URL proposal, you may have come across having to complete some of these things, such as costs, timelines, are all things that would be included in a proposal. And of course, the most important thing would to be in to include pictures. So sketches, diagrams, CAD, prototypes, just anything from the design process. Really, you could start at the most basic thing, which would be sketches. And then as you move forward in your design project, just keep all of those things inside your design notebook. Now, does it necessarily have to be a physical notebook? No, it does not have to be one. You could just keep all these files in your computer somewhere, uh, keep them in a centralized location for each individual project so you can come back and reference them later. And make sure to keep lots of pictures throughout the entire design project. So the thing to focus really on when you are compiling your notes for your design notebook and your portfolio is to focus on what you've done. So usually when you talk to an employer, they want to hear about what you have done and not really what maybe your teammates have done, or maybe they want to hear what your team has done as a whole, but more focus on your individual part. So for example, these are some guiding questions that I might use when drafting a blurb for a piece of a portfolio. So what was my inspiration? What does the project do? How did I build it? What challenges did I run into? What accomplishments am I proud of? And what did I learn? And these are just some guiding questions that I use to kind of brainstorm and think about what I want to show on my portfolio. So building your portfolio. Once again, there's different types of ways to build a portfolio. It can be a physical portfolio in which it would just be pieces of paper, perhaps, maybe on a binder. They could be loose leaf or in a folder. I would say this is more appropriate when you are in an interview or maybe in a career fair where electronics maybe aren't appropriate. But of course, you can always use a electronic portfolio as well. You just really have to gauge the situation and your audience for yourself. So for example, an interview portfolio, if I wasn't using an online portfolio, I would 
print out a bunch of pictures and maybe write very short blurbs. It should only be enough to supplement my resume. So maybe they'll read the information, the details, the bullet points from my resume and get that information. And then I'll show them specifically on my portfolio, the pictures that I've taken of those projects and show them those details as a picture so that they know exactly what they're looking at. You know, generally when you show your resume to a potential employer, they'll, they won't they will really read too much into the detail. So having a picture for them to quickly understand what you're trying to convey is very useful. So an online portfolio is what I would usually recommend that most people do. It's very versatile. You can submit the link whenever you apply to jobs, uh, if they give you that option. You can put the link on your online profile, such as LinkedIn, Handshake, uh, other job boards as well. You can, of course, include the link on your resume. And then something that I've liked to do, that I've been doing more recently, is just putting a QR code on my resume, or including a QR code maybe on my phone, or something else that a potential employer can quickly scan at a career fair or at an interview so they can just open up my portfolio right away and I can just start showing them things. So what are some different ways to make an online portfolio? Some of my recommended websites to get you started would be Google Sites. Google Sites is a free option. Uh, it's hosted by Google, it's completely free uh, very simple and easy to set up a website. Uh, the only downside is that, again, uh, you won't have your own custom URL, but I believe that might be something you can purchase. Another option is Squarespace. Squarespace looks very professional. You know, if you've ever watched any YouTube videos, listened to podcasts, you'll probably have heard of Squarespace. Uh, Wix is, again, similar to Squarespace. Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace are three things that are all fairly similar. They're just website templates, easy to use, easy to get started, and you do have to pay for them, although I believe that a few of them have free trials. Finally, there's WordPress. WordPress is more of a, like a blogging type website, but it's also good. You can use it to make a portfolio. And of course, if you are so inclined, if you have the technical knowledge, you can make your own website. Uh, some pseudo websites that I could recommend our Portfolium. Portfolium is more like a slide sharing website, so you could, you know, create a, a slide slides on Portfolium and then share them, but it wouldn't look maybe as professional or as individualized as your own website. And of course, GitHub for any of the computer science, electrical engineering, and you know, anybody who does any coding, you could put your GitHub in certain places. But again, it depends on the documentation of your GitHub, um, like how your readmes look, because again, you don't want your employer to have to look through and sift through lots of code. So what are the pieces of a portfolio? Things to definitely include are your home slash cover page that would showcase some of your more prominent or more recent projects. You want a page about your projects, of course, so you can really show the design detail of each individual project. You definitely want an about page, so just a short page about you. And then of course, always include your resume on your portfolio. Uh, sometimes somebody might get the link to your portfolio without uh, having seen your resume, and just having it there is uh, just good backup. Just be creative. These are just guidelines. These four things are just guidelines. Really, it could go any way. Uh, these are just my recommendations. So for your projects, try to use pictures, uh, show, don't tell. So when you are writing the description or the story for your project, um, try to use the pictures as much as possible. You could write a short, like maybe one paragraph, two paragraph thing at the top to really explain what your project does. But really what the person who is looking at it will be looking at is the pictures because again, most people don't like to read lots of words. They would rather just look at a few pictures, glance at a few pictures in order to get what the story is. So if you can really tell a story through pictures and really tell what you did, then it'll be really beneficial to you. Personally, I would include like a, a finished product at the top of the page and then go and then start going chronologically downwards. 
from the inception of your project, the sketch, all the way down to the diagrams, the CAD models, the prototypes, as it becomes a completed project. And of course, you can always provide links to your other project areas. So for example, if I was doing some coding project, maybe a GitHub, you know, doing a senior design, I think most of them, most of us had to create some sort of website or for our senior design project. So that is something that you could include as well. So the About Me page, again, it's a mini cover letter, links to your other online spaces, and a good picture of you. People like to see pictures of who they would potentially be talking to. I think it's very beneficial just so that people know who you are, what you look like. So guidelines of good design. I would say simple is better. Stick to two fonts, and I'll give you an example in just a sec. But essentially, sans serif for the title. So sans serif would be an, uh, a font like Arial or Helvetica, and then serif for body text or vice versa. So serif would be something like Times New Roman. Don't use Comic Sans. It looks very unprofessional. Uh, don't go crazy with the colors. You know, if you like neon green, if you like bright colors, if you want to use like 10, 12 different colors, maybe reconsider for something more simple. Sometimes people might get annoyed by looking at something like that, and you don't want somebody to be annoyed when they're looking at your portfolio because then they're not going to look at your portfolio. And finally, just be concise with your wording. Again, when you're describing things, try not to like write a whole essay on your project. Maybe just write a couple paragraphs at the most to really explain what you did. And then just remember to caption all of your pictures so that they can get information that way if they choose not to read your paragraphs. So here's an example of font. This is Comic Sans. Again, don't do this. And this is something, so the title here would be Arial, and then the body would be uh, Times New Roman, and it looks a little bit more professional. Uh, here are some examples that I've included. Uh, I'll include the links to the slide in the description. Uh, if you'd like to look at any of these websites, feel free to click on them. But I think they're all very good examples of a portfolio. So quick recap. So what did we learn? So what is a portfolio? It is a re visual representation of your work. Why should you make one? Because it can convey more detail than a resume can. And how would you make one? Well, we'll just start documenting your projects now. Record all the information, and once you have all your information and you've completed your project, then you can start creating your portfolio. Just be creative. There's no right or wrong way exactly to make a portfolio. You can really include anything you want. A portfolio is essentially just a reflection of what you want to show other people. Yes, you can include your engineering projects, but you can also include things like art um, or writing pieces that you might have created. Anything that you think would be beneficial for somebody else to get more of an idea of who you are. Alright, and thank you.